we are finishing 2-2. Two, two. So we did unit 2-2 two, two yesterday, and then we're going to get into 2-4 today. So the big thing we learned in unit 2-2 two, two was the general equation for a direct variation and for inverse variation. So it's these two formulas right here. Y equals K times X, and then that X can be raised to any power, and then Y equals K divided by X, and again, that X can be raised to any power. Yesterday, we did a word problem where we did the inverse variation. So that problem was about volume and pressure. What we're doing today is we're doing a direct variation. So I think it's an easier one. It's on the next page, it's called number five. Sometimes in math, we do problems. These are not necessarily true statements. It's just a fun way to do a word problem. So this one says the weight of a football player varies directly with his shoe size. If Joe weighs 182 pounds, he wears a size 11.5. John wears a size 13, so how much does he weigh? Again, we know that's not true, but we're just modeling with math. It says it varies directly. So I know that I'm using the general form y equals kx. y equals kx. Now, it's not going to be y equals kx. I'm going to plug in other terms for that. The k is going to stay the same. The y value, what varies directly, is the weight. So it says the weight varies, so the w goes in the y spot. And then it varies directly as his shoe size. So shoe size goes in my X spot. I really hate using S as a variable, but we're going to because I don't think of a better one for shoe size and it won't last long. It will never have a variable. We're going to find a number for it. Mm -hmm. Jared asked a really good question. Will K ever have a variable plugged in? I said no. K is the constant. We're going to find K in a second. So now we're going to use the piece of information that we have both of. I have Joe wears, or sorry, Joe weighs 182 and he wears an 11.5. We're going to plug those numbers in for W and for S, and then we're going to find K. So I'm going to say, okay, 182 pounds. We don't know K yet, and his shoe size is 11.5. So I'm going to have to solve for K. 182 equals K times 11.5, divide by 11.5. And when I did this earlier, I got K equals 15.8. Everyone okay with that? Perfect. Ellie, you checked me? Good. I love a check. I'm not great at this, but I did do this one yesterday, so I didn't have to make it up. Okay, now I have K, and I'm going to plug that into my general equation. Now I have W equals 15.8. S. I can plug in a weight or I can plug in a shoe size now to this formula and find out what my um, other variable is or what my other value is. So we're using John as an example. This is not real. <laughs> we're going to, I'm just yelling. <laughs> just, we're using John in his, as an example and he wears a size 13. And so we don't know how much he weighs. That's what we're going to find out. So we're going to say W is my um, variable. My K is that 15.8 I just found. And then my shoe size is a 13. So I'm going to multiply those two together to get what W is. And when I did this yesterday, I got two point, or sorry, 205 pounds, 0.4. That's how much he weighs. You could leave it at a whole 205. I just put a decimal in there. I like to put tenths if I can. So, all right, that was that word problem. Pretty simple. Just plug in with my direct variation. Any questions? Okay, we are now officially done with 2 2. So, that homework is due two days from now, which is Thursday. I do not see you Thursday. So, if you want to do it for me for tomorrow, awesome. If you want to do it for Thursday and either tune it in online or give it to me in person, that is also fine. Okay, now we're going to jump up to 2.4. So we're going to scroll ahead in our notes. I know this has been a really crazy unit. I've just been jumping all over the place, but now everything we've done so far has been covered. Now we're just catching back up to normal. So in unit 2.4, we're dealing with polynomials and we're dealing with all the zeros. So we're kind of looking at zeros of polynomials and we're exploring ways to find the zeros. So the first way is we're practicing some division. 
I believe you guys learned the long division in algebra two. Am I correct? Good. The other class did a really great job with it. So we just walked through it. I explained it like you'd never seen it before, but if you remember, go ahead and work at your own pace. Um, we're going to do two long divisions and then do two synthetic divisions. And then we'll learn maybe another new concept or so and just more division. So I, I don't really tell you what to do at certain times in, in pre-cal, but I do need us to know both ways. So I'm going to remind you long division. We write the, like, the number that we're dividing by on the outside of my, of my division sign. And then I write what the big polynomial is on the inside. Now, if you're missing something, we need to fill its place with a zero. So I've got x to the third plus 4x squared. Oh, shoot, I don't have an x term. So I need to put plus 0x and then my minus 2. Don't forget your plus 0x because you might, um, you just need a placeholder to keep everything straight. You don't necessarily do the wrong math. We just want to keep everything in the right column. All right, again, I'm going to treat this like you've never seen it before. So. We're gonna ask ourselves what multiplies by x to get x to the third? x squared, awesome. So I'm gonna put x squared up top and then I'm gonna distribute that to both of these things. So x squared times x gives me x to the third and then x squared times negative one gives me negative x squared. This is the biggest step a lot of us forget. You have to change the signs as we continue on. So when you do normal long division, you minus it. Well, R minusing means change all the signs. So this becomes a minus, that becomes a plus, and then I'm gonna solve from there. X to the third minus X to the third crosses out. Four X squared plus X squared is five X squared. Carry down the next term. Now I ask myself what times X gives me five X squared? Five X. Good. Almost all of these are just taking an X off. We're not doing anything too crazy or too hard. 5X. So now I'm going to multiply both the X and the negative 1 times 5X. So I get 5X squared minus 5X. I get minus plus. Then I combine. Those cross out and I get 5X. Carry down my negative 2. Now I ask myself what times x gives me 5x? The answer is 5. 5 times x is 5x. 5 times negative 1 is negative 5. Minus plus combine. Cross out my 5x's, I get 3. Ooh, there's nothing more to carry down. What is that 3? Remainder, very good. I've sometimes seen it written up here as R3. Um, but the best way to write it is all in a big um, equation where I have my normal um, parts that I just found, x squared plus 5x plus 5, my normal answer, and then I'm going to do plus 3 over what I just divided by, which is x minus 1. Does that seem okay for us? Does that match everything you remember? Awesome. All right, we're gonna look at the next one and I'm gonna let you mostly do this by yourself, but before you get too far along, I wanna make sure that you have a placeholder, not in the big fraction underneath the, the um, dividing sign anymore, but out front, I've got X squared minus two. So when I write X squared minus two, I do need to hold a place for zero X. I do need to hold a place for zero X. Under the long division sign, there's no place holding that's needed. I have an x to the fourth, I have an x to the third, I have an x squared, I have an x, and I have a constant. Everything else is good, but you do need a place holder on the outside. So you guys are working furiously away, which is awesome. I'll join you in a second.
I'm just doing my work silently. If you want me to talk through it, I'd be happy to, but most of you look like you're doing great. So just check in every so often, make sure you're doing what, what I'm doing. All right, check in, make sure you have what I have. I ended with the remainder of 5x minus 7, so I'm going to go off and write it all nice and pretty in a second, but I want you to see my work. Any questions on what I've done? I would not. I think it's prettier without the zeros. The zeros are not mathematically incorrect. It's just kind of redundant. You don't need it. So let me go off to the side and write the answer nice and pretty really quick, and then I'll come back to my work. X squared plus 2x minus 2 plus 5x minus 7 over x squared minus 2. All right, so now you can see everything. All right, does that come back pretty quick from last year? It was back there in your brain somewhere? Good. All right, next we're going to do synthetic division which is normally everyone's like method of choice. It's a little easier um, and there's usually less room for errors. The only thing though is I've had students who just like don't do the right process. And so if you don't do the right process, your answer is gonna be really wrong. We get to move on to the next part. Awesome, okay. So synthetic division, you take your um, factor. So we're factoring by X minus two. And I take this number, flip the sign, and put it in a little house. So it's x minus 2, so I take positive 2 and put it in a little box or a little house. Then I take all of my coefficients from my like long polynomial that I'm dividing by, and I list them next to that 2. So I've got 2, 4, negative 1, 1. I don't want any x's. I don't want anything else. 2, 4, negative 1, 1. I leave a line that's a space because I'm gonna do like math in the middle. And then I draw like a, like a, an adding or subtracting line for me to write my answers underneath. And then all the answers down here are gonna be the coefficients of my next answer. Okay, so the very first thing we do is we bring our first number straight down. Don't do anything crazy, Just bring the two down. Then to get to the next term, you take whatever's on the bottom and multiply it by what's in the house. So I'm doing two times two and I get four. Then I add these, you can call it combine, you can call it add, I just think like add up, combine the ones that are right in front of you. So I do four and four, which is eight. Then I do two times eight to get what goes here, which is 16. Negative one plus 16 is 15. And then I do 2 times 15, which goes here, which is 30. And then 1 plus 30 is 31. We okay with that? Normally we get prettier numbers, so if you're confused, you're like, wow, 31 feels really big. We do normally get much smaller numbers, but this one we didn't, so that's all right. 
we're allowed to have expectations, but we did all the math, right? You carry down and then you multiply. Essentially, all these little errors are times two, times two, times two to get to the next thing. So if you need to write those little times two so you know what you're doing, go for it. Now, this is my answer. If I was starting with a 2x to the third, my first um, piece of this new polynomial would be 2x squared. I'm going to go down one exponent. So it's going to be 2x squared plus 8x plus 15. And then you're like, well, wait a second, Ms. White, there's another number. This number, the last one, is always the remainder. So we'll say plus 31 over x minus 2. Any questions? Why do we multiply by two? Um, we multiply by two because that's the process. That's just what we do. Um, I'm sorry, I like get really, I don't like synthetic division because I don't fully understand it. Like I couldn't tell you mathematically why we do that. I just know that's what happens. We multiply by two essentially because we have to consider this factor as we go. So like, um, we're mimicking just like a shorthand of long division here. And so like we minus the terms and then you have to multiply the, um, like the coefficient of what you have by the factor in order to keep solving. So this is just kind of mimicking this part of long division. So like I had to multiply like this x squared by that too. And I had to multiply like this too by everything in here. So that's why we have to multiply by the factor. I truly do not think I was taught synthetic division in high school. When I was student teaching, um, when I was a senior, I was at this school in Dayton, Ohio. And the like second day I was there, the teacher taught this. And I just sat in the back and I was like, I have no idea what's happening. And I was like trying to like understand how this worked. And I just was never taught like why this makes sense. So I don't have a lot of explanations on why. I just know this is what it does. So that's the process. So we're going to do it again. Okay. So let's go again. All right, same idea here. What number is gonna go inside my house? Negative one, very good. And then we bring all my coefficients down. So I've got one, I have five. Ooh, I don't have an x squared or an x. That's okay, placeholder is zero, zero, and then negative eight. Put my line for my fraction, or for my adding and subtracting where all my answers are going to be. And then we go. Bring down the one. Multiply one times negative one, so I get negative one. Five minus one is four. Four times negative one is negative four, which is added to zero, so it's still negative four. Multiply negative four times negative one, I get positive four. And then zero plus four is four. Negative one times four is negative four, and I get negative 12. I'm gonna write it in my pretty factored form. X to the third, I started with an X to the fourth, so that means my first one has to be X to the third, plus four X squared, minus four X, plus four, plus negative 12 over X plus one. You're welcome to write Instead of plus negative, you're welcome to just write minus. I just tend to always think I'm adding the remainder and I just keep the negative sign up there. It does not matter either way. Whatever um, is your preference is fine. All right. So we practice those things. We're going to come back to them. Any other questions? All right. Next page. Okay. It says find the remainder two ways. Okay. There's several ways to find the remainder. The first way is to do either division, one of your divisions. So I'm going to say first method is division. It's either your long division or your synthetic division. We just spent however many minutes finding remainders, right? I mean, we found other things as well, but like I found negative 12 was my remainder. I found 31 was my remainder. I found 5x minus 7 is my remainder. I found three is my remainder. 
So just by dividing, you can automatically get your remainder. So that's one method. The other method, and I've got kind of two theorems to write here, and I'm going to write them in a different order than I did last year because I think this will make more sense. I'm going to talk about the remainder theorem, which just says if we have um, x minus k, and we're dividing by that, if we are divide, actually, let me rephrase it. If we're dividing by that, if dividing by x minus k, then if I plug k into my function, if I do f of k, my answer will be the remainder. So if I'm dividing by x minus k, then I can plug that number in, that k in, and that gives me my remainder. So if I were to look at like the one we literally just did, I had x plus 1. My k would be negative 1, and I could plug a negative 1 into all of my x's and solve, and that should give me my remainder of negative 12. We're going to do that in one second. So we'll see that in action in a moment. Going with that, though, I want to talk about something very quickly called the factor theorem. And that says if x minus k is a factor or a zero or a root or a solution, whatever word you want to use for that, if f minus k factors evenly or divides evenly into a function, then f of k will equal zero. Its remainder will be zero if it factors in evenly. All these two are saying is that if I have something written like x minus k, I can plug that k value in and either find the remainder or find that the remainder is zero, which means it's a zero, or a root, or a solution, or a factor, whatever word you want to use. Okay, let's see this in action. What I do want to do first is one of my divisions for this problem, because it said find it two ways. So which division do you want to do, the long or synthetic? Great. Will you get different answers if you do it the other one? No, so you can do whatever division you want. So for this first problem, we're going to do our division, so I'm going to do it off to the side. I'm going to do synthetic because I know that's what most of us will do. So we'll do our first method over here is my division. It looks like negative one goes in my house. One, five, negative eight, three. I had no place fillers. Everything was there. Do my synthetic division. You guys are probably already halfway through it. What remainder did you get? 15, me too. So 15, that's what I got so far. Now I'm going to prove that if I plugged in negative 1, for all of my x's, for that x, and for that x, and for that x, I would also get 15. So that's what we're going to do. I've got x to the third plus 5x squared minus 8x plus 3. And I'm going to plug in negative 1 because remember my k, you have to flip the sign. So if it was a positive 1, it becomes negative. And then you just have to be careful with your exponents. So negative 1 to the third is negative 1. Um, negative 1 squared is positive 1 times 5. Okay, that's positive 5. Negative 8 times negative 1 is positive 8. And then plus 3. Now I combine my terms. That gives me 4. That gives me 11. It doesn't matter what order you add them in because it's commutative property associated. You can do whatever you want. 
Oh, that equals 15. Check. And so this was my second method, my remainder theorem. Any questions so far? Everyone doing okay? Yeah, Sam? Yep. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. All right. Okay, we're going to go back to 2, 3 very quickly because it says we're going to revisit 2, 3, 2, F, and G. You can just listen and watch with me as I do this. It's not that important. If you remember on F, I made us put it in the calculator. I said graph in the calculator and then find what your zeros are. Um, we found our zeros were at negative 5, 1, and 11. What the factor theorem is telling me is that if I were to know that like one was one of my zeros, I could plug that in to confirm. Or if I was guessing if one was a zero, I could plug it in and confirm. What might happen is I would say, which of these is a zero? I'd say like A, two, B, one, C, negative one, and then D, like 10, I don't know. What you could do is plug each one of those into your function. And whichever one gives you zero is the factor. So I plugged in one because I was confirming that that one is a zero and I got out zero. So that was an example of the factor theorem. Does that make sense? I did the same idea for letter G and this one I said proving two is a zero. So I plugged two into my equation and I got out zero, which proves that it's a factor. It proves it's a root. It proves it's a solution. It proves it's an, um, a factor, a zero. Cool? We don't need to go any farther than that. All right. Next page. Come back to where I was. Number five says find all the zeros, and we're finding them exactly. We're not doing any decimals. Okay? There's a couple ways we can do this. So I'm actually going to list these. The first way, I always look to factor. Can I factor? If I look at that first one, Ooh, I can factor this one. I'm going to factor this by grouping. If you're not sure how to tell, I see a two and a three, and then I see a four and a six. Those seem like they got common enough um, numbers that I could factor this out. So I'm going to try that. Let's factor it by grouping. Ooh, that okay. Those two, those two. I can take out an x squared and I get 2x minus 3. Um, with negative 4x and 6, I can take out a minus 2 and I can get 2x plus 3, or sorry, 2x minus 3. The whole point of grouping is that these should be the same, so it, they are. And then I can take x squared and negative 2 and put them in their own parentheses, and then I can keep 2x minus 3 as its own parentheses. Okay, now that I found these, um, how do I find out what the actual zeros are? Set each factor equal to zero. Normally we just do it in our head because it's just easy numbers. You're like, oh, it's positive one or negative four or whatever. This one I'm going to have a radical and I'm going to have a fraction. So I suggest actually setting it equal to zero so you don't make a silly mistake. I see a lot of people on this fraction one give me two over three instead of what it should be which you add three and then you divide by two. So it should be three halves, but a lot of people give me two over three because they're trying to be too cool for school and not write down anything on their paper. Don't be too cool, write stuff down. It sucks more to miss it because you made a silly mistake. Um, the radical one, you just add two to both sides and then we'll take the square root. Square root, square root x equals plus or minus radical two. Those are my zeros. I'm gonna go write them up at the top. I'm gonna say zeros, and that equals plus or minus radical two. Do not forget your plus or minus or you will not get full points. And I'll write three halves. Okay, I want that a little bit. All right, so that's one method, factor, okay. If I go to look at number two, ooh, that one doesn't look like it's gonna factor by grouping, does it? Okay, we need another method. My other method 
is called my, well, let me make sure I have a check. I put my notes down so I can't balance everything. Anyway, here I am. Okay. This is called the rational view right here. Will you have to name this? No. But I want to make sure I name it correctly. So rational zero theorem. What this says is all my possible rational zeros, or some people call them possible rational roots, You guys know zero and roots means the same thing, right? Okay, I'm gonna write roots because a lot of time we use PRR to represent this. All possible rational roots of a function of a polynomial function, and I'll zoom out in a section in a second, can be written as plus or minus p over plus or minus q. Remember that rational means fraction? That's half the battle. If you remember that rational means fraction, then obviously all my pass possible roots would be written as a fraction, p over q. Have you seen that before, p's and q's? Good, you might not remember what they mean, so let me remind you. p is all of the factors of the constant. Remember the constant is the number at the end without any x's, no variables. Q is the factors of the coefficient, the leading coefficient out front. The leading coefficient is like x to the fourth or 3x squared or whatever the biggest exponent term is. So what we have to do is recognize the constant, recognize the co leading coefficient, and then list all of their factors. So P is a constant, Q is my leading coefficient. So let's look at that here. So I have my P is my negative six, and then my Q is whatever number's in front of X to the third, which is one. So I'm gonna make my list of my possible rational roots I'm going to do plus or minus factors of six, which are, well, multiplies be six are one and two and three and six. You can write them in whatever order you want. I like to write them in like numerical order from smallest to biggest, but whatever floats your boat. I don't really care. And then, oh, thank God the leading coefficient is just one. That makes it easier. So it's just plus or minus one on the bottom. Then we would list these numbers out. This one's easy because it's just one on the bottom. We're just essentially doing like one divided by one, two divided by one, three divided by one, four divided, six divided by one, which is just plus or minus one, two, three, and six. Where it gets tricky is if it was like, say it was a two X to the third, and then I had to also do everything divided by two, and that's where things can get like messy and tricky and just a lot more than I want to deal with. But we don't have that, thank goodness. Okay, now that we're here, we wanna use the factor theorem that I just taught you to see which, mat, which work. So we would do synthetic division. Oh, I don't mean to erase that. We do synthetic division as many times as we needed to to see which of those worked. I always start with one. I go, okay, positive one, then I try negative one. 
If those don't work, then I go to the next smallest number, two, negative two. Then I go to three, negative three. And then if I still didn't find it, I go to six, negative six. I'm gonna make you do that on the next one. This one, and sometimes I do this on quizzes and tests, I'm gonna give you a hint. I'm gonna tell you which one to use. You're gonna look for three. So I would say hint, x equals negative three. So I, oh sorry, is it negative three? You don't know, I do. It is negative three. So use negative three, not positive three. That will not work. So I would say hint x equals negative three, and then you would already know where to start. We're going to, um, we can't factor with that, but if I list my potential rash or possible rational zeros, the next thing I can do is once I have them, I'm going to use my division to find um, a new equation. You can either do long or synthetic. Again, whatever makes you happy, I do not care. We're kind of past the point of me testing you on all the different methods. I just want you to do what works for you. So we're gonna synthetically divide and then see what else we can do from there, okay? We should get zero as my um, remainder because that's how it should work out. So I'm gonna do negative three in my box. That's not really a two, I just made that up. One, one, negative eight, negative six. Synthetically divide. Oh, nice, I got zero, good. So now I'm gonna write this as my new equation, x squared minus two x minus two. You doing good so far? Now I get here and I do wanna factor it, but can you factor that? I don't think I can. If I can't factor it, I'm gonna to resort to like a, a tool in my toolbox that is very reliable, but we don't use a lot, quadratic formula. We're gonna to go to our quadratic formula and we can find our zeros from that. You guys remember that? That's a tool we get to use. I like to think of math more like a toolbox and everything you learn is just more tools to add to your toolbox. Um, and so quadratic formula can be something that we're allowed to use in order to help us find all my zeros. So remember that is x equals negative b plus or minus square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Plug and chug using this most recent formula or um, equation. That formula is the wrong word. Plug and chug. All right, so I've got, um, no, I need a new color. Um, positive two plus or minus radical negative two squared, which is gonna be four minus four times one times negative two over two times one, I think. Yeah, I think that's fine. All right, that gives me two plus or minus root over two, four minus, ooh, plus eight. So that gives me 12. Two plus or minus root 12 over two. And then 12 gets to simplify to two root three over two. Oh, and what's fun is that we get to cancel, 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 cancel. The biggest thing though is a lot of people want to end it. They're like, oh, it's plus or minus three. It's not just plus or minus three, it's one plus or minus three. Just don't forget that two divided by two is one, not zero. All right, so my zeros, I gave us negative three, but we're still gonna list it. And then the other zero was one plus or minus root three. All right, we got three more problems and we're just gonna go through them. We got this. Any questions so far? All right, this one, we can't synthetic, we cannot um, 
factor, we got to do our PRRs and we're going to solve and see what happens. So I'm going to look at my P's divided by my Q's. P's of factors of eight, Q's factors of one. Possible rational roots is plus or minus factors of eight, which are one, two, four, and eight. And then factors of one, which are plus or minus one. Okay, cool, no fractions, that's nice. Plus or minus one, two, four, or eight. Now, when you get here, this is where we have to do some guess and check. I suggest starting with the smallest number possible. So let's do this, let's divide the work. Let's do, some of us do positive one, some of us do negative one. Let me do this. Girls, you do positive one, boys, you check negative one and see what happens. And then I'll check two in the meantime. And if we need to do more than that, we will. And how do you check again? What are you doing now on your paper? Synthetic division, awesome. If you find it, holler. Two's not gonna work. Did anyone get it? Not yet. Two for sure doesn't work, so I'm gonna try negative two. Does one work? No, one doesn't work. Is negative one working yet? Yeah? Yeah. Oh yeah, negative one works, perfect. Okay, everyone stop what you're doing. This is why we divide and conquer so we don't have to do all of them. Negative one works. So let's do that out. One, negative three, negative six, positive six, positive eight. Carry that down. One gets me negative one, negative four, positive four, negative two, positive two. That's eight, negative eight, zero, perfect. Okay, so then I get x to the third minus 4x squared minus 2x plus 8. Okay, now we ask ourselves, can we factor this? Yes, no, maybe so. Yeah, we can factor this. I can take out an x squared, get x minus 4. I can take out a negative 2 and get x minus four. Okay, this is looking good. x squared minus two, and then x minus four. How do I find my zeros here? Set them equal to zero. So x squared minus two equals zero. x minus four equals zero. x squared equals two. x equals plus or minus a radical two, and x equals four. Okay, so my zeros, I got plus or minus root two, I got four, and then I got negative one over here, so don't forget about that negative one. So I'm gonna go off to the side and list them. Zeros, negative one, four, plus or minus root two. Cool, that was a lot of work, but we did it. Any questions? Okay, I've got one more concept to teach you. So flip your paper over, last two problems. It says, show that three is an upper bound of blah, 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 blah. And then it says, show that negative four is a lower a bound of blah, blah, blah. If, if something is an upper bound, then all of my signs will be positive when I do synthetic division. All signs will be positive. My pen decided to work, that'd be cool. There we go. All signs will be positive with synthetic division. All that means is I'm just gonna synthetically divide and if all of my answer is positive, 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 then that works. If it's a lower bound, 
it will alternate signs, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, negative. So all signs will alternate. Positive, negative, positive, negative with synthetic division. If it's neither, if it's neither of those things, then it's just not a bound. So all we're doing for these last two is synthetic division and seeing if it equals what we want it to be, if it's all positive or if it's all negative. All right, so let's do it. I'm gonna go back to the upper bound one. So I'm gonna put three in my little house. I'm gonna put all my coefficients down. I'm gonna synthetically divide and see what's up. I don't have to do any placeholders. I'm not missing anything. Carry it down, two. Two times three is six. That gives me two is six again. That's seven is 21 and that's 19. Are all of these numbers positive? Yep. That means it's an upper bound. Yes, upper bound. Same idea for the last one. Synthetically divide and see if it alternates positive, negative, positive, negative. Multiply by negative four, negative 13. Ooh, positive 52, I think. Positive 47, negative, oh God, 28, 188. And then negative 191, I think. I'm like 99% sure those numbers are right. Perfect, thank you. But it doesn't even matter what the numbers are. All I care about is my signs. So you can just say, oh, I know it's going to be positive. Oh, I know it's going to be negative. Positive, negative, positive, negative. Is that a lower bound? Yep, that's it. So I'm going to say yes, lower bound. All right. We got done just in time. But that means that we finished 2 4 today. So 2 4 is also due on Thursday. Again, I do not see you Thursday, so you can welcome to have it done on Wednesday, or you can put it on Schoology on Thursday, or you can email it to me, or you can hand it to me, or you can put it on my desk, or you can hand it to me in person. I do not care. On Thursday. All right. Any questions from anyone? Okay. I'm going to stop recording.